Good morning. Welcome to the Sunderland Veterans Memorial and a very special Veterans Day observation ceremony. My name is Dan Van Olsen and I have the distinct honor and privilege of being the master of ceremonies for today's event. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone, community members, our guest speakers, and of course, my fellow veterans and their families. Thank you all for coming. I would also like to thank the University of Massachusetts Choral Group, seated behind us here in the Colonial Guard, standing in the uh, Memorial Park for attending and participating today. We will open our ceremony with the UMass Choral Group singing our national anthem. Please stand if you're able and put your hand over your heart during the singing of the, an of the anthem. Veterans may also render the hand salute. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous light For the ramparts we watched were so sacrificed in war and peace to protect America and the American way of life. You may already know that Veterans Day began its life as Armistice Day. Actually, I should have asked you to sit down. Go ahead and take your seats. <clears throat> Armistice Day recognized the day the ceasefire for World War I was signed 100 years ago today, almost to the minute. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. Armistice Day was initially designated to honor those who fought in World War I, but in 1954, Congress replaced the word armistice with the word veterans. And Veterans Day was officially born as a national holiday to recognize all living veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. But because Veterans Day and Memorial Day are dedicated to remembering members of the military, People sometimes confuse Veterans Day with Memorial Day. The difference is Veterans Day is a day to remember the living and Memorial Day is a day for remembering all those who died in the service of our great country. So our primary reason for being here today is to remember, celebrate, and thank the living veterans seated among us. To begin, I would like to ask Deacon Mark Kolosinski of Our Lady of Grace Church in Hatfield to open with a prayer. Deacon Kolosinski. protection for all who live here today. May your loving guidance and mercy always be felt in everything we do and in the decisions made by our elected officials. For our veterans, may they, live, may they have peace in their lives and understand how grateful we are for this service. 
a special blessing we ask for those individuals on our memorial wall. Blessings upon the organizers, volunteers, and visitors uh, for our celebration. May our heritage continue to be passed on to the next generation. Heavenly Father, we ask for your love and blessing for our youth. May the wisdom of our elders, the education experience they receive in our town, give them strength and understanding to bring great designs to our world, country, state, and blessed Sunderland. Finally, Father, may we see in the face, see the face of Jesus in everyone we meet, so we all may live in peace without fear of violence and wars in our world. We ask this through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother. Amen. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Tom and Fide, Thomas Feidenkevich to the podium to read uh, Governor Baker's Veterans Day proclamation. Mr. Feidenkevitz has been a Town of Sunderland Selectman for the past 19 years and is currently serving as Chairman of Selectman. This is a proclamation for the com from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Campania by the Allied Nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas, since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who serve their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedoms. And whereas in November 2018, the world will commemorate the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2018 to be Veterans Day. And this is signed by Charles Baker, the Governor of the Commonwealth, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and Secretary of State William Francis Galvin. Thank you, Tom. We're fortunate in that we have three guest speakers for today's ceremony. I would like to introduce the first of our guest speakers, Army Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Magner. Lieutenant Colonel Magner is a native of Malden, Mass. He graduated from Malden Catholic High School in 1993, enlisted in the United States Army and served as a light howitzer crew member from 1993 to 1996. He graduated from West Point Military Academy Preparatory School in 1996 and attended Nicholas College from 1996 to the year 2000. <laughs> in 2000, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army through the Worcester Polytechnic Institute's Army ROTC program. Following his commissioning, Lieutenant Colonel Magner served in several different positions, including platoon leader, company commander, and army staff officer. Colonel Magner's foreign assignments include one tour in Qatar, two in Afghanistan, and two in Iraq. He's currently serving as the Professor of Military Science and the Unit Commander at the Army's ROTC Detachment at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Lieutenant Colonel Magner's decorations include three bronze stars, three meritorious service medals, one joint service commendation medal, 
four Army Commendation Medals, the Thailand and the United States Parachutist Badges, and the Combat Action Badge. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Mack. Well, man, I'd first like to say I see the Amherst uh, football hoodie out there. I'd like to recognize some Amherst football. Uh, I am breaking uh, from the script with that, right? <laughs> Uh, and really, I should be the ones thanking everyone out here just for being here. And you nailed it on the head when you said it wasn't a Memorial Day. It's actually a day to celebrate service. Uh, and yes, veterans, they serve, but also ask yourself, how can you serve? And, and thereby doing that, you would actually celebrate a veteran's service. Uh, and I do have to say, I'm a little nervous with MP staring me in the face, especially behind the Texas sunglasses, right? Right? And, uh, and you guys sounded absolutely phenomenal. Uh, that was really a kind of heart-grabbing anthem. So thanks for being out and doing it. Um, so, yeah. Does that mean I'm clapped off the stage? No, no, no. All right. That's what my kids do when I talk too much. <laughs> All right. Um, but also, I want to thank and take a moment uh, for those that work, serve, and support our VFW. Uh, at a time where it's needed the most, there seems to be so few that serve. And so for that, I just want to thank you right here in the front row. All right. uh, so real quick, how many people here have today off from work? You raise your hand, it's, it's interactive. All right, All right so, so we do have a couple of hands. Uh, how many people are going home, going to a friend's home, going to a pig pole, right? Roast, pig roast, we call it a pole, right? That's my North Carolina, anyone? So no one's going home today. All right, All right so I got a few hands, all right? Um, and then who here is gonna grab some of the Veterans Day sales? A anyone? My daughter is already all over, all over with that. I had to shut my debit card down on the way here, right? Uh, and then also, how many people here are parents have gotten to experience that birth of a child? All right. So every, every one of us has experienced that birth and the service tied to family. That's kind of what veterans have. It's what a community like this has. That's why when I got asked to be here, I'm like, yes, right? It's a community event. It's like here, I got to spend all day with the kids. So yes, I will blame my uniform discrepancies with the elementary school students. I was told that a long time ago, deny everything, make counter accusations, and you'll be all right. Um, but really, to every one of those questions, there's a flip side, right? There's a catch. Um, so everyone that raised a hand um, that have today off, there's really a veteran somewhere that doesn't. There's a person who doesn't. There's a person right now grinding and working to make ends meet that doesn't have today off. Um, for everyone that said they have a place to go home to a friend's home, there's a veteran who doesn't. There's someone who may not be a veteran, but that's still out there grinding today that doesn't have a place to go. Right now, of that homeless population, uh, the numbers are 8.6% of the homeless population are veterans. And that's from all the wars. It's not just one or two, it's, it's from all of them. So it's not a generational thing, it's a society thing. Uh, and really that number comes out, these numbers from two years ago, to just about 50,000 the homeless. Uh, and also for the Veterans Day sales, right now, and this was according to the 2014 Census Bureau, there are about 319 million Americans However, there's only 21.8 million veterans. Skills are tipped. That's why service is at a premium. Not just military service, any type of service is a premium. And finally, the last question, how many got to experience the birth of a child? Uh, currently, just from 2014 numbers, there are approximately 7,000 casualties between Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, that's 7,000 that haven't got to experience that since that deployment. So what I ask is when you leave here today, on a long weekend with tomorrow off, please take advantage of the sales, take advantage of the day off, put your feet up, rest in the Lord, um, 
but reflect on service, not just the veterans, but on everyone. That's how you honor and celebrate Veterans Day, is by reflecting on service and then seeing how you can serve. Whether it's just picking something up off the side of the road that's near home or a neighbor's home, dang it, that's service. Celebrate that. That's what makes the country unbelievable in any other way is a call to selfless service that is experienced in everything from youth football coaches to the youth football players. Service, they're wearing the Amherst, right? Um, so my mom told me really I can get long-winded so I should be quiet, but I tell her, well, I was born the youngest, so that's your fault, right? <laughs> um, yeah, two sisters and an older brother. And then also someone really smarter than me told me the best way to end a speech or a talk is with somebody else's words because then like anything else, Deny everything, make counter accusations, not your words, right? Uh, so President John F. Kennedy, in a Massachusetts, no one would criticize him, right? So I figured it was safe. And he said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. In other words, what I was taught in that Catholic high school and Catholic grade school, out of like two years of Latin, I remembered facto non verba. I just like saying it because it would make my parents think, think I swore. But really what it means is it means deeds, not words. So deeds of service, that's how you celebrate. So thanks so much, I'm honored to be here. I'm standing amongst giants, uh, looking out here. Uh, and MP, if you have anything to say, just wait till everyone's gone. <laughs> so thanks so much. All right, they're great comments. <clears throat> Thank you, Colonel Magner. We, uh, we so sincerely appreciate your, your own service to our country. Our second guest speaker today is Mr. David Graves. Mr. Graves enlisted in the United States Navy's Aviation Reserve Officer Candidate Program in April of 1967. <coughs> In January of 1970, he was commissioned as an ensign in the United States Navy on board the USS Constitution. In October of 1971, he completed flight training and was designated as a U.S. Naval Aviator. As a Naval Aviator, he went on to fly three different types of military aircraft, the A-4, the F-8, and the F-14. In addition, during his military career, he deployed aboard four separate naval vessels, the USS Hancock, the USS Constellation, the USS Ranger, and the USS Kitty Hawk. In October, actually on October 31st, 1989, at the rank of Naval Commander, he retired from the Navy on board the USS Constellation. David currently volunteers as a docent above the US, aboard, excuse me, the USS Midway. Please join me in welcoming Mr. David Graves. Okay, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Um, nice getting back to Sunderland, although uh, I'm a little nervous, but it's more shivering from the cold than anything else. I looked up this morning and San Diego is supposed to get up to about 78 degrees today, so uh, uh, not used to this. Okay, uh, to all veterans, uh, uh, and also to those that aren't veterans, but who are veterans? Uh, there's someone's husband, someone's wife, someone's brother, someone's sister, um, their parents, their uh, so on and so forth, but they're ordinary people uh, that we see day to day here, there, and everywhere. Uh, but the thing that separates them is that they really do some extraordinary, extraordinary things. So, but they are regular uh, uh, people. I want to talk briefly about my brother Richie, who uh, they're going to have the dedication of the road sign here shortly. Um, he was uh, almost two and a half years older than I was, and uh, uh, quite a perfectionist. Uh, I remember being out in the store and uh, Dad telling me about this uh, other farmer in town that came up to him and he said, hey, who is plowing that field up in North Sundborn? 
And Dad said, well, that was Richie doing that. And this farmer said, I've never seen uh, rows of plowed uh, field as straight as that was. And that was the type of person uh, he was. Uh, everything had to be done to perfection. Uh, being a naval aviator is uh, a, a special uh, task and responsibility and uh, requires a phenomenal amount of uh, training. Uh, I've never been so scared as my first night landing. Uh, I thought for sure that I was going to die at least 12 times over before I finally touched down on that first landing at night. And then you have the attitude that a bit of bravado perhaps, but you say, well, you know, I survived that. So wasn't all that bad. I guess I can try it again. And the more you do it, the, uh, you never get comfortable uh, landing aboard the ship at night uh, because things can turn to a can of worms, as they say, and less than a heartbeat. So, but life aboard the uh, uh, ship is is difficult. Uh, typically, you have 16 to 18 hour work days, uh, 30 to 40 day line periods with virtually no rest uh, in there. Uh, they ensure that the pilots get adequate crew rest. But, uh, that's about it. Um, the living spaces are, are tight. Uh, today's uh, aircraft carriers have about 55 to 5,800 people on board. There are only 1,100 people and maintaining the airplanes and uh, anywhere from six to 11 month deployment. So uh, uh, it takes a lot. And that's six to 11 months that a father is away from his children, uh, away from his wife and it's tough on tough on families too. Uh, the divorce rate amongst uh, uh, Navy people is uh, uh, pretty high and so it's a very difficult thing. Um, but I uh, wanted to talk about uh, freedom uh, a little bit. Uh, this is uh, another quote, uh, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. So something uh, much wiser than uh, 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 myself uh, is responsible for that. I uh, want to talk about my new job as uh, docent aboard uh, Midway Museum in San Diego. Um, it's uh, what a docent's responsibility is, is to educate and inform, uh, teach people about certain things. And we spend a lot of time talking about freedom and what it was like being aboard a ship so that uh, people understand what it is to serve uh, their fellow citizens and in their country. It's a huge responsibility. Midway uh, is up to almost 1.5 million visitors a year. Uh, what's astounding is that uh, only about 3% of the people that visit that museum uh, know of anyone uh, in the military. So the, the military had uh, uh, huge numbers of people in World War II. Uh, many of them went, uh, rolled over into Korea and certainly Vietnam. Uh, but it's a shrinking part of our population. And if we don't pass on that, uh, what it is to serve other people, uh, regardless of how you're serving them, uh, we're, we're going to lose it pretty soon. So a uh, very important thing. And I'd like to extend an, op, uh, uh, an invitation to everyone. Uh, if you ever come out to San Diego and you want a tour of Midway Museum, uh, don't think you're gonna see it all in one hour. Um, a lot of people that come there, they come right at 10 o'clock when they open, and we have to kick them off at five o'clock when we close. So it's a pretty in-depth thing uh, there. And there are only two days a year that it's closed, Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day. So open every other day of the week, year. So I want to thank the, the citizens of Sunderland for uh, the 
uh, not just the plaques that are going to be uh, talked about today, but the whole uh, Veterans Memorial here. That's a huge part in educating uh, the younger population today uh, about uh, the people that, that preceded them and what they did. So uh, thanks for this and uh, everything that you do to educate those young people. Thank you. Thank you, David. Now, if you'll direct your attention to the flagpole, Mr. Michael Ahern and Mr. Kenneth Cushy will first raise the flag, or actually they'll first bring the flag down to the bottom of the flagpole, then they'll take it back up to the top and then back to half staff. While Veterans Day is a tribute to America's living veterans and it's more a celebration, like uh, Colonel Magner said, than it is a solemn remembrance, it's still always appropriate to include a moment of respect for those who gave their lives for our country and for us. One way we show respect is to fly the national flag at half-staff in memory of those who paid the ultimate price. And as many of you seated here today know that when someone in the armed forces dies while serving the country, we play the song Taps, typically, uh, in memory of that person. Mr. Ahern and Mr. Cushy will now lower the flag to half-staff, and Mr. John Rose is going to play Taps in the background. Thank you, John, Kenneth, Michael, well done. I'll now ask everyone to join me in observing a moment of silence for the fallen. Afterwards, uh, the UMass Choral Group will sing America the Beautiful.
you. That was truly beautiful. Our last speaker today is Representative Stephen Kulik. Representative Kulik was first elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives in October of 1993. He's now in his 13th term representing the 19 towns that make up the 1st Franklin District, located in western Massachusetts counties of Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin, and is geographically the second largest house district in the state of Massachusetts. Prior to entering the legislature, Rep Representative Kulik served 11 years as a selectman in the town of Worthington, where he was active in many regional and statewide organizations, promoting the interests of municipal government, especially in small towns like ours. He's a past president of the Massachusetts Selectmen's Association and the Massachusetts Municipal Association. He is vice chairman of the House Committee on Ways and Means and is a member of several legislative caucuses that focus on issues of importance to Western Massachusetts. He founded the Small Town and Rural Caucus and he is a member of the Regional School Caucus, the Regional Transportation Caucus, the Manufacturing Caucus, and the Progressive Caucus. Finally, he is vice chair of the State Agriculture and Rural Leaders, a national group of legislators who work on state and federal policy issues regarding agriculture, water resources, the environment, trade, and other issues of importance to rural communities. Please join me in welcoming Representative Stephen Kulik. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, everyone. Well, this is just a wonderful turnout uh, of veterans and for veterans. Thank you all for being here. Um, I really appreciate uh, representing Sunderland for the past 25 years because one of the reasons is that you have shown such respect and honor uh, for veterans. And I've seen that every day, as I, every year as I've participated in the annual Memorial Day observances, which uh, are some of the most meaningful and moving uh, ceremonies that I've participated in anywhere. And also the um, organization and construction dedication of this memorial uh, next to us here, uh, which really says so much about this community and its values and the respect it shows to all those who have served. Um, you know, it's important to uh, not just thank our veterans and their families for their service, but to do tangible things if you're state or federal or local government. And one of the things that uh, has been most meaningful for me over the years of my service as in the House of Representatives has been the initiatives that we have passed um, for veteran services. and. When you ask anyone around the country, any of our major national veterans organizations or veteran services officers that I work with throughout this region, they will tell you that Massachusetts can be proud of having the best package of veteran support services of any state in the country. Uh, we are number one in that. Uh, we should be number one in that, and I hope we will always continue to be number one in that because it's a way to that we can tangibly uh, show our veterans that they are valued, um, that we support them, and that we're addressing their needs, which constantly evolve uh, as, as veterans get older, as they return from different conflicts. Um, we want to thank them for their service, but also uh, give them the kinds of services they deserve. So in the last decade, in particular, every legislative session has produced a major piece of legislation. We had the Valor Act 1. We then followed it a few years later with the Valor Act 2. Um, we had the Home Act. And just this year, uh, we have passed, I think, the most comprehensive piece of veterans benefit legislation from Massachusetts um, in late July, at the end of our legislative sessions. And it was, it's called the Brave Act. And it was signed into law by Governor Baker uh, just this past August, so it's pretty new. And I thought I might just give you a few of the highlights that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, it's, it is a very comprehensive uh, uh, piece of legislation um, that affects people at the local level and the state level. So one thing right off the bat it does is it designates the 5th of April as Gold Star Wives Day 
and the last Sunday in September is Gold Star Mothers and Families Day. It does a rewrite of the Veterans Bonus Program, which was established in one of those earlier pieces of legislation, the Valor Act. Uh, it's a program administered by the state treasurer and allows for the maximum amount of benefits under the program without being subject to appropriation. It also, and this is important in our neck of the woods, develops a Massachusetts Veterans and Warriors Agriculture Program for veterans who may wish to enter the field of agriculture, which is, uh, you know, it's always been a part of our heritage here, but it is actually growing as an economic um, activity uh, in our entire state. So for veterans who are returning from recent conflicts who may want to get trained and get into agriculture, we now have a program to do that. It also clarifies language from the HOME Act provision, which grants paid military leave for service members who are engaged in training and operations. It previously had been 34 days a year, it now is 40 days a year. It also, and this is important as we stand next to the uh, municipal complex here in Sunderland, it directs cities and towns to designate reserved parking for, for veterans at city and town halls across the Commonwealth. It also changes the eligibility requirements for veterans' property tax exemptions from residing in the Commonwealth from five consecutive years to just two years. It increases the veterans' tax work-off program from $1,000 to $1,500 a year and allows cities and towns by acceptance to increase veterans' tax abatements annually, not to exceed the increase in the cost of living adjustments. And it adds prisoners of war to the list of eligible veterans for property tax abatements. It increases burial expenses for indigent veterans from $2,000 to $4,000 for a funeral costing $5,000 or less. And I think this is important, it provides time off for veterans uh, on Veterans Day and Memorial Day, with or without pay at the discretion of an employer. What it means is that if you're a veteran and you want to take time off on Memorial Day or Veterans Day, you, you cannot be penalized, you cannot be threatened uh, with losing your job for doing that. So it's an added protection. And finally, the thing I'll mention, and this I'm just mentioning probably a third of the provisions that are in this bill, it authorizes recipients of the Bronze Star to be eligible for the Bronze Star registration plate through the registry of motor vehicles. I'm sure there are some Bronze Star uh, holders here uh, today that may want to take advantage of that. So I think it's important that we've done these. We have to continue doing them. Um, I've, I'm so pleased to see my successor in the legislature here, who we can now officially call Representative Elect Natalie Blay. Um, who I am extremely confident is going to uh, continue to prioritize uh, the needs of veterans, pay attention to veterans. Serving veterans when you're in the legislature is a nonpartisan issue. It is something everyone agrees on. This um, BRAVE Act that passed this year was passed unanimously in the Senate, unanimously in the House. Um, and it's, again, a way that um, we can show our thanks we can, we can pay honor and tribute to all of you who have served. And so let me, in closing, just say today um, to the families and the veterans that are here today, thank you for your service. Thank you. <clears throat> so now I have the honor of introducing although he's not here, a very special resident of Sunderland. Born on Memorial Day in 1923, Mr. James Williams joined the United States Marine Corps in 1942 and was honorably discharged as a second lieutenant in 1946. At 95 years of age, Mr. Williams has the distinction of being Sunderland's oldest military veteran. Unfortunately, Mr. Williams is not able to join us today. However, James, if you're viewing this, we salute you and thank you for your service. <clears throat> today, we've been honoring all the men and women who've served or are currently serving our country in the armed forces of the United States. However, 
We also want to remember the 19 men from Sunderland who lost their lives in battle or who died from injuries suffered in battle. These men were in the prime of their lives. They were our sons, our brothers, our uncles, our fathers, sweethearts, and husbands. Their survivors suffered a traumatic experience that caused deep emotional wounds, many of which were or will be lifelong. Sunderland has chosen to remember these 19 with, the mo with memorial street signs. As you drive through Sunderland, you'll notice new black signs that have been mounted on or near the street signs at Amherst Road, Falls Road, Montague Road, North Main Street, Old Amherst Road, Plumtree Road, Russell Street, South Main Street, and South Silver Lane. There are samples of the sign. There's one posted over here in the uh, Memorial Park. These are the streets that the 19 lived on. When you see one of these new signs, please pause for a few minutes to remember these men and their sacrifice. As a community, we are grateful to all the people and organizations that contributed in some way to complete this important undertaking. These include the Greenfield Savings Bank, the Polish American Citizens Club, the Sunderland Men's Club, the Sunderland Women's Club, the Sunderland Highway Department, and the Sunderland Select Board. There are also several different individuals who were instrumental in this project, including Mary Ellen Ahern, Wendy Hull, Linda Lopatka, Sherry Patch, Cindy Bennett, Dan Devine, George Emery, Amy Lee Hubbard, and Robert Ahern. Please join me in thanking all these wonderful organizations and people with a round of applause. Thank you. I'd now like to ask Mr. Fyden Kevitz, Lieutenant Colonel Magner, Mr. Graves, and Representative Kulik to join uh, Tom at the podium. At the uh, beginning of the 300 celebration, the Board of Selectmen Town of Sunderland had struck medallions. And the medallions we're gonna to present today to each of our speakers. On one side has a, a copy of our town seal, the parsonage. And on the flip side, we have a picture of, or an engraving of our sycamore tree up on North Main Street. We're not gonna be like the NFL, we're not gonna flip it. <laughs> but I couldn't tell which is head or tails. But what I'd like to do at this time is to honor each of our speakers today with a gift from the town for their participation. So Mr. Graves, Colonel Magner, <laughs> Dr. Jeanette Poole, thank you gentlemen. Just so everyone knows, we have, uh, we're going to go visit Mr. Uh, Williams later today uh, to present him with his medallion as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, Colonel Wagner, Mr. Graves, and Representative Kulik. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's ceremony. We invite you to join us in the library for a reception sponsored by the Friends of the Library. And as we depart and go to the library, the singers from UMass will sing, This Land is Your Land. Thank you all for coming. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters.